Jenna Morton. And I'm Tosh Taylor. And on today's episode, we have a very important topic, um, specifically coming from a, a woman whose husband works in trades. I'm uh, ah. pretty excited to have this conversation. We are speaking with Susie Dowling today. Susie um, is with us because she is the owner, operator, maybe co-hosting with your husband. We'll get into that with Dowling Enterprise Safety Training. Susie, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, so I want to start things off today uh, learning a little bit about you and your husband and how you have ended up with this company. Well, <clears throat> at first when I got in the trade, uh, my duty was to do uh, daycare. So I started in daycare for 17 years. Uh, for some reason, my neighbor came to me and he said, uh, a company need a safety coordinator. So do you want to apply? And I said, well, I don't know if I want to do it. <laughs> so I didn't know nothing about construction, but I decided to apply to really please him, to be nice to him. And two days after I was hired. So that's the way I start my career as a safety coordinator. So for uh, two and a half years, I did that in a general uh, um, manager company. And after that, I when I started to take trainings and all like the involvement as well as the employee to get trained uh, because by law we need training uh, for using aerial lift or telehandler or fall protection uh, and it's part of construction. So every time that I was trying to send uh, my boys or girls to go uh, for training Either it was I needed 10 person at the time to go for training, uh, which is pretty much impossible to get 10 people out of the construction site. Mm. And every time it was canceled because there was not many teachers. So I decided to start Dowling Enterprise. Because for me, like when you look at roofers or siding, uh, the people that is doing siding, uh, they want fall protection now, not in three weeks or five weeks. So that's where uh, Dowling Enterprise uh, started for us. And um, also, we didn't have anybody doing it in French. Huh. So I am somebody that can do it in French. And also what we push through is we have a lot of people coming from out, out, outside the, um, Canada and they have different language. So what we did, we can have the books in Spanish so we can use a translator and do it in their own language. Because for me, safety is the first uh, thing that should happen on construction site because we want people uh, to go home at night. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Interesting. <laughs> it just, it, it boggles my mind that there was such a hole in the system that you were able to, I, I'm, I'm glad you were able to step in and fill it, but for, that for so long there was such a hole in our system that you couldn't have French safety training or that you couldn't even access the training as quickly as needed. Yeah, and also it's, what happened is um, to, to get those training, it's so expensive. So that's why it's, when you're a, a new to this, uh, it's scary. It's scary to start your own business and be like, oof, what kind of money? Like when we started, I started that in my living room and that was horrible. That was a horrible <laughs> feeling. We understand that, both of us oof. do. Yeah. <laughs> because I had to clean my house every day <laughs> in my bathroom every day. I had a dog and a cat and people coming in and oof. Um, and <clears throat> after that, you know, we want to know if it would work as well, right? But when we seen that people were coming and also because I am in the trade and people know who I am and they wanted me to be successful, I had a lot of company that uh, were helping with that. So that's why they were coming to us. So now we were able to build an office, which I love <laughs> because right now I just have to put the book on the table and my class is ready. Yeah. <laughs> Don't have to clean every day. <laughs> so for me, uh, it was it's something. And what happened is here in New Brunswick, we're kind of 10 years behind Alberta. Mm -hmm. For safety, uh, it's, it's really horrible. Uh, we should be ahead of the game and pushing it and training is the first part of the safety because to be a competent person you need to have training 
uh, knowledge and experience, and that's in the law. So it should be followed and it should be pushed to have the training, necessary training, to operate an equipment or because those equipment can kill. Fall protection, it's the same thing. You want to tie off and you want to be able to go home at night. So you want to tie off and make sure you do the right thing Absolutely. So for your life. And my husband had an accident. It was not his fault in that, but I always explain to the people that I deal with, it's not just the accident. It's what's going around the accident. When he had that and had the surgery and all that, I was working full time. I had two babies at home. Uh, my baby was 22 months and the other one was three months. Uh, we just got married. We were a really young couple as well. And, you know, I had to take care of all of those people. So it's in a financial situation. I'm telling you, nobody wants to go there. When you don't know if you're going to be able to, fill, to feed your babies, uh, it was the most uh, horrible part of my life. It's not knowing if I can feed them. So people need to understand that an accident, it's just that not just somebody that died or somebody that have, uh, are at home. You're not on holidays. My husband, I was asking him simple tasks just to do the dishwasher and he couldn't pick up a glass and he was shaking and everything, all his body was shaking. So it was not just, oh, uh, I'm at home and I can do everything that I want and it, it's not a holiday. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's hard on the family, it's hard on your financial situation, it's hard on everybody. Is there, and th this is totally putting you on the spot, but I do wonder here in New Brunswick, are there any stats on how many people aren't properly trained in the workforce? No. Okay. They don't have any anything on that. Because nobody wants to admit it. It's, uh, <laughs> but it's just getting there that uh, uh, WorkSafe New Brunswick will push it more and more uh, of the training. And I think people start to understand how much it costs a accident. So if they're not trained, they can go uh, to the company and be like, you didn't do your duty. Because companies, uh, the owner have responsibilities in the act and also supervisor and employee. So it's all a chain that you need to make sure. So the owner have certain things to do and after that he pass on to the supervisor and the supervisor have certain thing to do and the employee as well. Uh, what's common in all of that is to make sure everybody have a health and safety place to work. So everybody are responsible for safety. So the owner of the company have the responsibility to train their employee to make sure they are safe. After that, it becomes their responsibility to follow the rules. That's a very clear way to, to line that out. I like that. Mm -hmm. it, it's very very precise that yeah, it, it, it's everyone's duty and everyone has different levels that they have to take part in. Yeah, and like I said, a lot of people doesn't know about the act, uh, the responsibility part. So that's something that I, my duty is to make sure the world know it because it's really, really, really important. And it's always, it's easier to say, oh, it's your fault, it's not <laughs> mine. It's always easy to do it that way, but in the laws, it's nice and clear saying your responsibility are and for the supervisor. And also, <clears throat> I always tell the supervisor I protect them a lot because they're the one that can go to jail. They're the one first that's going to go to jail or pay a big chunk of money. Mm. So we've seen that uh, more and more right now in New Brunswick, accident after accident, it's like, Please guys, do your duties. And safety is a, a hot topic because it takes time for mm -hmm. them, right? And at one point I had an example that, oh, they said we have to do field hazard assessment. So it's to put on paper what we're gonna do today, what's gonna be the task, what the control would be, and what we're gonna wear or the, the protective equipment that we're gonna use to control it. So. Uh, somebody told me uh, it takes 45 minutes to do that. 
the piece of paper is that big. Well, it doesn't take 45 minutes, but it can take 45 minutes if you drink your coffee with your coworker and chat after, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter what it could be. A toolbox talk can be 10 minutes, but it can go to one hour as well, right? Yeah. Depends on how you bring it up. Uh, so a lot of people say safety, oh, it takes time, it takes time. Well, if you don't wear your harness by choice and you fall, what do you think the time you're gonna have, right? You should have taken that two minutes. And nobody gets up in the morning saying, hey, today I would like to lose a leg just to see how it works, right? Yeah. So nobody wants to do that because, and, and being in a car accident, or we don't think about it. We wanna go home at night with our husband and uh, wives and kids and mom, whatever. Um, so it is really important to understand that when you put your harness on, you don't put your harness for me. You put your harness for you and your kids and your, and that's what I bring up all the time. I said, if you don't want to do it for me, because safety coordinator, people doesn't like them in construction. We are not the favorites. Uh, but I always say, if you don't do it for me, it's all right, but do it for your family. Do it for you and your family because at night you're gonna go home and you can hug them. Because I'm telling you, like when my husband uh, was healing that, I had to paint the house because he couldn't look at the walls anymore. So mm. he chose a color at my house. <laughs> <laughs> you tell everybody that when they walk yeah. in, don't you? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's not often that happened, but I was like, what color you want, honey? Like, I'm going to call somebody to come do it. But really, it's what it is, right? You don't think physically, uh, most of the people will deal with the pain. They'll be all right with the pain. Mentally, it's another story. When you like to ski or skate or snowboard and you can't do it anymore, it's not a holiday. You know, like when an accident happened, it really, and now I'm so used to what the phase are for an accident that people call me and they're crying and they're like, oh, you told me that would happen. <laughs> I said, because I lived through it and mm -hmm. I know that an accident, you're not on holiday. First two weeks, yeah, you're tired and you know, I'm gonna recover. But when the financial situation kick in and how, why I cannot do anything and you need to stay in bed or you have other problems that coming it's uh, it's it's hard mm -hmm. so let's let's walk through a scenario if you will let's say uh, I'm the owner of a roofing company or I'm deciding mm -hmm. that I'm going to start a roofing company what are my first steps once it comes to hiring a staff and getting them trained and how often are they to go through your training services well uh, like a roofer or siding uh, they want fall protection right away mm -hmm. because of course they're gonna work at height or on the equipment so they need to have either fall protection or uh, fall protection and aerial lift so the first thing they do uh, they call me because new hire they need to be trained right away like most likely roofers because they can putting them on the ground to cut or do something else uh, it doesn't help the company at all so they call me and uh, I booked a training and for us, our facility that what we do is that it doesn't matter if it's one person or 10, mm -hmm. we gonna do it. Most of the people are like me, last minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always last minute and I was always, I'm, I'm like that. Uh, so when I called for an appointment or anything, can you do it tomorrow, right? We we. The, the life is so fast sometimes that we lost track. So they call me when they call me, hey, can you do it uh, Friday? And most of the time I do it on the day that they need mm. because they need to be trained to go to work. So it's really important to me. After when they did it uh, one time, uh, they come back in three years okay. to renew uh, their ticket. Most of the time when it's the renewal part, it's faster. So what we're trying to do is to do combos. So we can do like fall protection in the morning, aerial lift in the afternoon. So the employee only lose one day and uh, it's easier for the company. We're trying to save them money 
and uh, as and and what they need as well. So sometime I'm gonna talk to the company and be like, they want to train everybody. And I said, do you need everybody trained? Because if you're 20 and 10 is gonna use it, why spending another yeah. you know two three thousand dollar? So. For me, it's like being fair with the company. I always been a <laughs> money saver <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because I went through it, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm really trying to save money to the company as well. It's really important to me, and I want to be there to help them. What exactly are the safety elements? Is it just aerial and lift, or are there other things that you offer as well? We have uh, a lot of trainings. <laughs> We have uh, fall protection and all the equipment, which is aerial lift, scissor lift, telehandler, forklift. And also we have confined space. So there's uh, trades in there that needs to work in areas that are closed and they need to know how to test the air and all that uh, different thing. And in our facility, we wanted to show them. So we built something, a confined space in there in our garage so they can go in and feel it. Because a confined space, if it can be a manhole uh, that you go down, it's small. Like, I don't like confined space, so I would not be able to do it. So when we show them, and if they panic in our confined space that we're here and it's no danger, um, we'll say, like, I don't think you should go in there, right? So you need to know all the danger and all that stuff. And <coughs> recently, we start doing a swing stage because now the building is going bigger and yeah. bigger and bigger in town. So aerial lift is not big enough to go to 13 level, 15 level, and now it's like a 30 mm -hmm. uh, floor and that, that's going to be built. So they need a swing stage. So that is a system that they put beside the building and it's like an elevator from outside. Oh, like the, the window building. washers that they use in New York City kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, right, that's <laughs> most of the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we do bosom chair. Uh, we did not do enough uh, a lot yet because bosom chair is not something that is known here. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I have no, no idea what that is. Yeah, no. and it's really scary. I would never use that. <laughs> <laughs> really, really scary. So this is a little piece of wood. It's like a chair that you sit in and you have your harness and your tie off and there is a cable going up and it's hooked on the roof. No thanks. Uh, but no. you <laughs> pull it that way to go down. Uh -huh. Remember the movies that we see in the yeah. hospital where they... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's that. Oh my gosh. So it's really scary, yeah. but that's something that now we can uh, provide to people when it gets there at one point. Uh, we're gonna be, we're the only one in New Brunswick uh, nice. that can do it. And also uh, next week, um, we're going for more training and we're gonna be able to do fall rescue. So fall rescue is having somebody in the team <coughs> saying, if somebody fall, how I'm gonna mm. go get that person and uh, bring them down without having too much injuries. So it's going to be another challenge. We're trying to get to, we, we don't want to have competition with others. Mm -hmm. We want to have our own trainings that nobody else does. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do uh, a lot more training coming up. We want to do um, the uh, trenching and all different kind of training that right now are not known uh, in New Brunswick that you can have. Well, when our cities are just coming like like we were, you're mentioning the 30 is it 38 stories i think it's supposed to be 30. then is it 30 okay mm -hmm. so the 30 story building that's coming like again we're as you said earlier we're 10 years behind mm -hmm. here in new brunswick on a lot of the safety training that they have in alberta but that's also because their buildings are bigger and mm -hmm. we haven't quite got there yet so uh, it will be a huge change for a lot of people yeah. um i know with my husband he's uh like a pipe fitter plumber and he has some training that he does online do you offer that as well I, I can't think off the top of my head what kind of training it is Probab yeah. probably I was gonna say his first aid but that doesn't make any sense so no so <laughs> <laughs> don't do that online yeah. please yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people doing the training online uh, this is a subject that it's um, hard for us Ooh, because something. yeah exactly <laughs> 
The problem is with online training, to have a complete training, you need to have uh, somebody that show you how to, mm -hmm. let's say, fall protection, how to wear your harness. Because if you don't know how, you can fall off your harness. So mm -hmm. you need to have somebody that show you how to install it, how to inspect it, make sure you use it the proper way. And most of the online training, uh, it's, um, they don't show that. Right. You need to have somebody in your company that will deem you competent, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, wear your harness. Now they take the responsibility of showing you. So mm. if anything happens, it can come to you. You don't want that liability. Um, if you're like me, when you do a online training, you can skip through it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know no, if you did no that before. I cannot <laughs> imagine that you did that, no. And no. if you can say people doesn't like being uh, in training, oh, it's a long thing, and so we're gonna skip it, uh, so you don't have the full uh, training. And for me, being face to face, being together, being able to ask questions, uh, that's the way to go. We uh, at our facility, we have equipment that doesn't pass the the inspection to show them, mm. like this is what you're looking for, mm. this is what can happen, and we want to make sure they understand. And for me, I'm visual. I yeah. like to see, mm -hmm. yeah. I like to be in class, I like to ask questions, and I want to make sure that I'm doing it right so I can go home tonight. Right. So it's my life. Yeah. I think that's such a great place to leave the show today. I think like so. It's very Other important. than letting everyone know if they are either a company or someone working at a company that thinks they should be doing your training, mm -hmm. how do people find you and get in touch? They can go on uh, our Facebook page, uh, which is Safety. Uh, Dowling Enterprise Safety Training. Uh, please just go on the page, like, share. Uh, you can call me at 506-962-1013. Uh, uh, and also, um, you can go on my LinkedIn as well. I always put message uh, in there. I'm sorry I'm not on Instagram yet. <laughs> <laughs> Technology, I'm, yeah. I'm 10 years behind <laughs> you. <laughs> But I'm gonna find somebody to help me yep. one day with that. <laughs> uh, but I'm trying right now. We're so busy, and you know, book the day, reserve your day because uh, sometime I have a call. The other day I had a uh, uh, a call saying like, "Oh, we don't have any training." And two minutes after, I had a training book. So right. please, uh, when you call reserve your day because it's going really really fast. So. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for your time. Yes, this was fascinating to learn about a whole business around this right here. So yep. thank you and for I coming love, in. I love doing that. It's my passion and I love safety to others. I'm a safety coordinator for a reason, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you uh, found the perfect calling. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and I love helping people and it's part of me helping people going home with their family. It's really important to see your kids at night, to be with your family. It's mm -hmm. the most important, precious thing that you can have. And thank you for having me. Thank you. And we'll uh, have you all back again with us next week.